Hello again, everyone. Welcome back to Conquests of the Longbow. We are meeting with the green man, and he has riddles for us. I'll risk the peril to your, of your riddles, if that is the only way I may earn your protection. It is the only way. Let us begin. What do you do? Tongue cleave, speak no more. Legs to wood, toes to root. Deep into the earth you dig. Half man, half tree, only the freedom of your hands I leave thee. If you pass my riddles, I will restore you. If you fail, you will become a full oak and never walk as a man again. I will pose the riddle. You must spell out the answer in the druid code. I will begin. Metal or bone I may be, many teeth I have and always bared, yet my bite harms no one and ladies delight in my touch. Oh, at least it's down there. Now well, let's just get some failures here. Nay, that is not it. You may try again. Not born, but from a mother's body drawn, I hang until half of me is gone. I sleep in a cave until I grow old, then valued for my hardened gold. Doop. Nay, you are wrong again. Once more you may try before all is lost. I am two-faced, but bear only one face. I have no legs, but travel widely. Men spill much blood over me. Kings leave their imprint upon me. I have greatest power when given away, yet lust for me keeps me locked away. That's gonna be like coin or something, isn't it? But uh we we, we wanna we wanna fail again. You have failed What a fine young oak you make. Wait until you drop your first acorns and feel the birds nest in your branches, then you will know true contentment. Why is it always the same me and message? That is so disappointing. Alright, let's try this again. With less failure. My first master has four legs. My second master has two legs. My first I serve in life, my second I serve in death. Cure me, and I live beyond my death. Tough I am, yet soft beside. Against ladies' cheeks I oft reside. Okay. Uh, so I have a list of potential um, options. So... Against ladies' cheeks I oft reside. Um, let's see. Potential uh, answers I have listed are comb, fur, snow, cheese, wood, feather, beehive, coin, and eye. Um, so, my first master has four legs, my second master has two legs, my first I serve in life, my second I serve in death. Cure me, and I live beyond my death. Tough I am, yet soft beside. Against ladies cheeks, I offer side. I'm gonna go with fur here. Alright, so let's see. Um, F is up here. U is here. And where is R? R is there. Aye, that is the word. Two more riddles you must answer. Here is the next. Metal or bone I may be, many teeth I have, and always bared, yet my bite harms no one, and ladies delight in my touch. Oh, that's, uh, that's gonna be comb. Alright, so C is there. O is there, M is there, and where's B? B is up. Oh, no, no, no. Can I... How do I... There we go. Okay. 
There we go. Aye, you are right again. The final riddle is upon you. Not born, but from a mother's body drawn. I hang until half of me is gone. I sleep in a cave until I grow old, then valued for my hardened gold. Um... Hmm, let's see... I'm actually not sure about this. Oh, okay. Not born, but from a mother's body... Uh, drawn. So, milk. I hang until half of me is gone. I guess it just means... I don't know. Uh, you're getting rid of, what, the, the whey or something like that? Leaving just the curds? Um, I sleep in a cave until I grow old. Curing in a cave. And valued for my heart and gold. Cheese. I think that's what it is. I don't know how I'd get that without the, uh... Well, these these are probably in the, the manual, if I actually would, like, read through the manual again. Um... There we go. My oath, it's good to feel my toes astride the earth again. Spoken like a true fleshling, now heed me. From this moment on, my protection is yours. I have laid a spell upon your form in the clothings of your flesh. In this form alone will the trees know you. When danger is upon you, seek out the heart of a grove of druid trees. Only within the grove is, my, is the magic powerful enough. Spell out the secret name of the druid trees and they will hide you until the danger is past. But only the true druid name spelled in code will serve. I weary of this man's speech. Farewell. You know, you were more of a, a brown man than a green man. Just gonna, just gonna, you know, say that. This is the most ancient and sacred oak in the forest. Alright, is there anything else that I need to do today? I don't think so. That night, I told my men the details of the dangerous mission I must undertake. Thanks for just, uh, you know, automatically advancing me once uh, it's like, up, oh, up, oh, you've done everything that uh, you need to for the day, so uh, we're just going to automatically uh, bump you out tonight. You look a trifle glum. Does Marion's task weigh heavily upon you? I'll worry about that when the fair begins. I must also find a way to enter the tournament. And avoid Prince John's spies. No risk is too great for our king. Then why so glum? I'm sure the maid cares for me, and yet... Did you flatter her, speak of her eyes, her lips, her hair? Take her in your arms and press kisses upon her? This is no simple, simple country girl or vain strumpet. She has no patience for flattery. Mayhap I should have found some other way to express what was in my heart. If the maid does love you, I warrant she will find the way for you. The days to the Saturday Fair speed by. Merchants, vendors, and travelers of every description come up from London, down from York, on foot, horse, mule, and carts and wagons, or by boat and barge upon the River Trent. We leave Watling Street alone, having no desire to hinder those going to the fair or stir up trouble with the sheriff, until the time is right. Okay, let's see... What goodies do we have in our inventory? All the usual stuff, basically. Um, let's see. Alright, today I think we're going to go to the Outlook. Or the Overlook. Overlook Hotel. What ho, lads? You all look a trifle glum. Have you forgotten? Today is the Saturday Fair. The town will be filled with merchants from all parts of the world. Fine goods. The archery tournament. An ear that itches. Good food. How could I forget my mission? I must find a safe way 
to go to the fair today. But if that's what worries you... Of course not. We were wishing we could go. Well, go. You're all clever men. If you can find a means and wish to risk your necks, by all means do so. That's all we wanted to hear, Robin. We didn't want to get in your way. Rubbish, be off with you, but don't get caught. To a certain extent, I, I wonder how uh, the guards could recognize most of these people by their faces anyway. I mean, unless they've actually been uh, um, waylaid by, uh, by the band. All right, let's go to the Overlook. And let's take a quick save again. Uh, let's uh, let's make a new one, just so I don't have to overwrite uh, attempt two just yet. All right, someone should be coming any time now. Excuse me, I'd like to have a word with you. About my lord and savior, the green man. I bid you welcome to Sherwood Forest, good yeoman. Good day. You're going to Nottingham? Uh, yep, that I am. And from the looks of you, to shoot in the archery tournament. Uh, yep, that I am. Your man, a few words. Uh, yep, I be a simple man of the North Country. Oh, you're a Scot. No, I'm just kidding. I don't feel that way about the Scots. You seem little afraid. Weren't you warned of the bold outlaw Robin Hood? It is he who stands before you. Well, I fear God, and I fear the devil, but I fear naught else. Well said, my friend, and if I were if I want a payment from you before you pass along Watling Street, I've not but three pennies to be, to pay my way to town and compete. That's why I go to shoot. The prize is a golden arrow. I mean to win it, for the lass I love cannot wed me till her father finds me worthy. But if you seek to rob me, I'll nay stand idly by, mark you that. Well, what if I pay you? I'll make you a bargain. You see, I, I've a need to enter Nottingham today, and your clothes would make a fine disguise. Ah, uh, yep, so as you could so as you could try for that golden arrow for yourself, I reckon. Nay, keep your coins, I'll... Wait, my purpose is more urgent than the tournament. Though I could indeed put that golden arrow to a greater use than you can guess. You may be a fine archer, but I know the competition, and I say, without slighting you, that you stand little chance. Here's what I offer. A purse of silver worth fifty marks, and a new suit of clothes in fine Lincoln green. Tisn't half the worth of the golden arrow, but a respectable sum all the same. In Nottingham, you risk all and likely gain nothing. Here, you risk nothing and gain far more than you have now. I'll not sell my bow or arrows. Of course not, my friend. Would I want to shoot with other than my own bow? I'll see that purse of silver first, if you don't mind. Now, not that I don't trust you, Mark, but... <laughs> Gladly will I oblige you. Stand fast while I call my men. Why do you have to pose like that every time you blow the horn, Robin? It makes him feel pretty. This good yeoman has made a fair bargain with me. Tuck, I've promised him a purse worth purse of silver worth fifty marks. Fifty marks? For what? Why for his clothes? We'll bring my suit of new cloth and fetch back an eye patch for me as well. Fifty marks for those clothes? Well, you'll take my own garb and weapons back to my cave. But fifty marks Come, my penny counting friar. He does me a service, and he has a far fair last win to wife. Bring him the purse and wish him well. Hm, for fifty marks, she'd best be the most beautiful girl in the Shire. Wait, why would I be taking my weapons back to the cave? The eye patch has completed your disguise nicely, Robin. But if you enter the tournament... One eye or two, no man will best me. Escort our friend to the shortest way... By the shortest way north through Sherwood. I wager he's eager to find his way home and, and to a certain lass as quickly as his feet can carry him. 
I hope that I am. God preserve you, outlaw. You be a good man. Kiss the girl once for me. I may do that, but I thank you all the same. Okie dokie. Well, we should be able to get into town now. Let's go. Let's go. All right, let's see. Um I think we just uh let's uh take a quick save first. I think we just go to the fair. Well, that lady looks different. She's a lovely shy lass. Tis Richard, Aaron's son. Wow, how do I know that? A man named Aaron, bearing a fertile of sticks. A man with a cart full of large jugs. The mule looks displeased with, his, with its lot in life. The cart is filled with large, bad-smelling jugs. A woman looking at the pots. A man selling rugs. A man looking at the rugs. This man shows more interest in gossiping with a neighbor than intending to his own wares. A man talking to a peasant. A peasant bent with age. A young man with a sack on his back. A familiar man. A familiar woman. Or is it a woman with a familiar? A woman listening to gossip. A woman gossiping. I see nothing of interest. Oh, that's rude. A woman looking at the fair. I see nothing of interest. Oh. Man selling used armor. Man trying very hard to look wise. A boy with a game board. Some sort of rudimentary game has been scratched onto the table. A townsman. He has the look of a pickpocket eyeing off the purse of the man near him as a cat would eye a mouse. Man who is careless with his purse. A merchant selling sturdy blue trousers. Sturdy blue p pants of stiff material. In other words, they're jeans. A pint pot. A quart pot. A one gallon pot. A quarter gill pot. A woven, woven straw mat on which pots of many sizes are displayed with utter indifference. A five gallon pot. A one gill pot. A nipperkin pot. At least it's not a rudderkin pot. A half gill pot. They are thick, luxurious rugs with a foreign look to them. The man kneels upon a thick rug woven in the Daventry style. Ah, ha, ha. They are thick, luxurious rugs with a foreign look to them. A bin filled with slightly used pieces of armor. Can we talk to people? My dad wants me to move up in the world, so I'm going to be a swineherd when I grow up. That that seems good. I used to be a programmer for Sierra Online, but hauling wood is much easier work. Ah, <laughs> Weiston Wheelwright. I wouldn't be too interested in these jugs, sir. The old privy pots I'm hauling off from the castle. What do you carry to the fair? A sack. Miles Mindermast. I can see that. What do you have in the sack? Feathers, sir. And right heavy they are. A sack of feathers? How heavy could it be? Well, I had to fill the bottom with stones, didn't I? And why is that? To keep the feathers from floating away. I wish you luck in the world, for you shall surely need it. It's the old gaffer! If the potmonger has no time for me, I'll go buy my pots elsewhere. Ah, where's Sam? Cedric Nymphadoro. Yonder potmonger shows not the slightest cares for his own business. Okay, that was not exactly uh, what I intended you to do, Robin, but, you know, you can try that. P 
Patience Wits End. Oh, Patience Wits End. Uh -huh. If I stand here long enough looking needful, perhaps one day the potmonger will dine to notice me. Oswald Oakhurst. These fine rugs come from the King's Palace in Daventry, auctioned off but for a fraction of their worth. Why, you can even see the crest of Daventry upon one of the shield... Upon one, and the shield of Lytton upon another. Hmm, Lytton, huh? And the price? Ten marks for the large, and seven marks for the small. Mark Hood. Why do I know these rubs... These rugs come from Daventry. Trust me! Corey Cole reminds me of Spielberg. On a bad day. And it's Laurie Cole! Oops. Reminds me of the alleys in, of Shapir, only, well, earthier. Where are the dancing woman? That's what I want to know. Ah, oh, the Coles decide to show up. Well, that's nice of them. Biddy Big Ears. Don't interrupt you, Rudesby. Mini Mumble News. Mubble News. Mubble? Mubble? I don't know. I wonder if that's supposed to be Mumble. Well, I hear tell she dances in the woods. Oops. Shoot. 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 No, I missed it. I missed it. Well, I hear tell that she dances in the woods. Nay, and to think she was one of the Queen's ladies. Aye, the abbot t said to me, Agnes, the other night, that sure's said to me, Agnes, the other night, that sure as he's a holy man, that Lady Marion is a witch. What, your Agnes talks to the abbot? She must be all of fifteen. She goes to the abbot for private instruction. Oh, that's just gross. I took one look at her and said, Many, you send that girl round for private instruction. She says he instructs her most wonderfully. I noticed Agnes getting a bit thick about the waist these days. Whatever do you mean, dearie? Oh my. Mistress Yalki. It all looks so wonderful, I hardly know where to start. I wonder where the scrumpy cider is. Christopher, Christopher Shank Armor. Get your second-hand armor here. Crusade cast-offs. Minor dents, dings, and dents. No charge for bloodstains. Impress the ladies. Free tale of gallantry with each purchase. Daniel Quayle. A mind is a waste of thing to lose. Nay, uh... To lose a mind is a waste to... Nay, um... Dan Quayle. Yes, former, former Vice President Dan Quayle. George Bush. <laughs> I'm busy. No answer there. What about the kid? Joshua Mandel. I want to design games when I games when I grow up. It's probably one of the uh, um, programmers' kids. You wouldn't be thinking of slipping your fingers into that man's purse, would you? Quentin Lightfingers. Mercy me, never, sir. I wouldn't dream of it. Make sure you don't, or it'll be the Pied Piper, Pied Powder Court for you. What's it to you? You're no sheriff's man. Having known too many good men accused falsely of being thieves, I have no patience for those that truly are. I'd advise you, sir, to take more care with your purse. Oh, eh, uh, what? Silas Simpkin. Oh, thank you. Hiram... <sighs> Hiram Levi. What do you think of the quality of my wares, sir? They seem most durable, but I doubt that men will care to trade their comfortable hose for trousers. I may yet find a market for them. Time will tell. Yep. Levi's trousers. Well, there's a lot more to uh, see on this screen. Uh... I think we will take a look at uh, all these people in the next episode. See you then, everyone.